Okay. Oh, yes. Sorry, mine's dead. Can I have Yeah. I have a charger, too, if you want a charger. Or is yours battery or charger? Yours is charger kind, right? Yeah. I had to take apart the bathroom pass just to get the cable. <laughs> Here, you borrow You can come get it. Yeah. Um, usually it charges up within the class hour, so. Um, so this is still 4.2. I don't know what page it is. I'm sure it says at the bottom of mine, but uh, you should have the packet now. It's the last page of examples for 4.2. So an object moves along the x-axis for time 0 to 6. The velocity of the object at times t is given by v of t equals that. Uh, for t equals 4, is the object speeding up or slowing down justified? Um, who didn't get called on yesterday? Jack? How do we do it? OK. And I'm not even looking for you to give me the answer uh, that we would write there, just like how we would figure it out. That is a good question, isn't it? <clears throat> um, I don't know if you took notes yesterday or not because we didn't have the packets, but okay. I was going to say we wrote it down for one of the questions yesterday. It's kind of like a little chart. Perfect. And then if they match up, they're speeding up, and if they don't, they're slowing down. Perfect. Um, so you need to find the velocity and the acceleration at that time. If they have the same sign, it's speeding up. If they have opposite signs, it's slowing down. This, this question is in the calculator portion. So this one theoretically could be done by hand, um, but we don't need to. So the reason I, I mention that is because on the calculator active questions on the AP test, they traditionally try to set it up that the questions could go faster because most of it can be done on the calculator. And so you do have to kind of show some work because that's like what it says justify, but the work that you don't have to show is how you calculate the answers. So we don't, we don't even have to find the derivative on our own. Um, and that, that's what I was assuming most of you probably didn't know how to do on the calculator yet. Is that correct? Okay. <clears throat> um, so we want to find V of 4 and A of 4. Now on the calculator, there we go. We're going to go to Y equals and put in the one equation they gave us. And I, I guess I didn't mention yet, but I, I think most of you probably automatically already realized that the acceleration is going to be the derivative of the velocity they gave us. The one tricky part is possibly that they gave us velocity to start with, and they didn't give us position. So some of you might accidentally do the derivative twice. Um, so ln of I'm not going to put in a T because on the calculator X is kind of like default. Um, minus 0.15 T cubed. And don't forget, once you enter the cubed, hit the arrow to the right to get out of cubed. And I'm pretty much going to type it in exactly how it looks there. And when I put in the power, I can enter four fifths if I want, or I can enter 0.8. Um, it, it's not going to affect anything. I know some of you probably will like to enter four fifths just because you want to enter it exactly how it's written there. So if you're going to do that, I'd recommend using the fraction button. That'd be the alpha y equals. And it'll bring up that little extra menu.
And I'll, oh, wait a second. I don't know if a lot of you need, does anybody need help typing this in? Oh, I forgot to check. Does anybody have an 83 or like the 84 that doesn't type it in like this? Okay. So the, the next step will be slightly different. You're probably okay typing this in? Okay. Was there anybody else that needed help typing it in? Did you get it ty this typed in okay? Okay, perfect. Uh, all right, if we want to graph it, we can, just to see if it worked, basically. Um, why don't we want to use that whole window that's currently up there? Like, where are we focused on? Where do we actually care about for right now? At four seconds. And then in the directions, it said that it was only zero to six. So I'm going to hit the window, and I'm going to change my X values to match that, because that's my T. So I'm going to change it to zero to six. If I needed to change the height of the window, I could. And I'm, if I remember right, I did this not on the computer. I think it graphs quite a bit slower, if I remember right. Yeah. So the, the emulator one here uses the computer itself. So if I want to find out what the velocity at four seconds is, this is the velocity function. I'm going to hit trace, and then I'm going to hit four, because then it'll go exactly to four. So I know a lot of you have used the trace in the past and you just sit there and hit the arrows left and right until it's close to where you want it. But you can tell the calculator exactly where you want it to go. Okay, so V of four is what? 4.497? And I'm pretty much always gonna go to three decimal places just because that's AP likes that, and that's kind of what they use for everything. Oh, where'd my calculator go? <laughs> where'd it go? There we go. Um, is everybody okay up to now? It looks like something, no? Okay, where do you want help with? How to graph it? Hit graph. Does it give you an error message? Oh, your window's off. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. You can help her. I wasn't like trying to scold you. <laughs> if you wanted to go back to 10 by 10, hit the zoom and Hit Y equals. Thanks. Um, I bet for some reason your Y1 isn't highlighted. Okay, now, if, if we're using a graph, um, I, believe, I believe I've showed you guys how to, how to find the derivative at a point on the graph before, right? Not that we need it for this problem, although we could do that. I didn't even think of that. I wanted to show you how to graph the derivative, but I didn't even think of that. We don't even need to, but um, let's graph the derivative regardless. So if I go to y equals, um, your calculator allows you to find the derivative at an individual number. We're just, uh, oh, pack it, you need a pack it. That's what you're kind of looking at. There you go. So your calculator allows you to find a derivative at an individual number. And so we kind of trick the calculator into finding the derivative at every single number and graphing that. So on Y2, we're gonna go to math, or you can use the, you know, the menu from alpha windows too, but uh, n derive. Now if you're on the if you're on the 83 or the older screen, um, you're 
you're going to do the letter part last. I'll show it in a second. So we're going to hit ddx, and we want to take the derivative of the first equation. I don't want to. I don't want to zoom past this part if everybody's not here. Are you at this part or not? That'll do it. Um, you can still type the second one in even without the first one. It won't work at the very end. You can just retype the first one in later. Um, we want to tell the calculator to use the first equation. So under the variables button, we want to find y1. And so that's going to be under y variables. Now this screen might look confusing. Your calculator can have a bunch of different kind of functions. You've never used anything but regular functions. You've probably never done parametric or polar. So we're going to hit enter on function. And then y1 is right there. So we hit 1. It's an awful lot of work just to get to y1. Now there is a shortcut. And I don't know if it's easier or harder to teach that. The shortcut is alpha trace. Yeah. But I was assuming a lot of you would forget the shortcut because it's not labeled. <laughs> um, that, that's kind of what I really don't like about the, this hidden menu, is it's not labeled anywhere for anybody to remember where it is. So unless you're using it a lot, you're not going to remember. So, but you could get Y1 from right there. Oof. After Y1, we want to find the derivative at every single x value. So instead of us putting a single number, we're going to put an x. And it's kind of a cheating way to get the calculator to graph the derivative at every spot. And then if you hit graph, it'll graph the derivative probably really slowly. And that's because it's doing like hundreds of thousands of calculations in the background to come up with the derivative at every x value. And we could have found this derivative by hand. I mean, it's not like it was terrible. Um, but we didn't necessarily need to. And so now I want to find the value of acceleration, which is my red line, at 4. So I'm going to hit trace. Or should I pause? Is anybody not here? Oh, I forgot. You're right. OK, for the 83s, let me. This is how you enter it on the 83s. So it's going to say end derive. You do y1 first, and then comma x, comma, instead of. How do you get to the y1 hit variables? Move to the right to function. Or y variables, sorry. Tyler, did you get it OK back there? Yeah, the 83s and 84s, uh, the early 84s, have the exact same capabilities, but they, they basically look different when you're doing it. OK, we want to find the value of uh, acceleration at 4, so I'm going to hit trace. And it'll probably start on the wrong equation. You can hit up and down to switch which equation you want to trace. And now when I'm on the red one, and even if you're using one that's not in color, up on the top it tells you if you're using y1 or y2. So I want to find it at x equals 4, so I just type 4, enter. And my acceleration is negative 2.713.
I'll write it down before I forget it. How are we at, are we okay with that so far? Okay, should we erase this and kind of start over? Because I feel like doing it once isn't gonna make you remember anything. <clears throat> An easy way to erase everything and start over is you go to the memory and reset your calculator. Don't do this, <clears throat> don't do this if you guys are actually saving things on your calculator. But I don't, so. I just reset all the time. It just goes back to the beginning. And then it puts your window back to 10 by 10. It erases any equations you put in. Um, I basically do that all the time because there's so many settings that we change that it, you forget about them. Okay. Here's what we could have done from the beginning, but I wanted to show you guys how to graph a full derivative. So... In y equals, I could have started by putting the original equation. I'm just going to type it in again. What I could have done from the beginning is I did trace at time four to find the velocity at time four, which we figured out was 4.497. Instead of me taking the time to graph the whole derivative, what I could have done is gone to the calculation menu and then just find the derivative at time four because that's the exact same thing we were looking for. So because the derivative of velocity is acceleration, I could have just done that. I wanted it at four. And then it tells me my derivative is negative 2.713. So kind of knowing how to use a lot of the functions on your calculator can definitely save you time. Um, but for right now, I think it's probably better that you just start learning how to use the buttons. What would we have answered for A anyway? Slowing down. Um, we could have said this is greater than zero, this is less than zero. Slowing down. Okay, do you guys want to try B on your own? Start trying to figure out the buttons on the calculator? It says, what time does the particle change directions? Do, uh, do we need a reminder on how to find that? Particle will change directions when the velocity is zero. When the velocity is zero, that's between right and left directions. So find when velocity is zero. Do you need a calculator? Yeah. Why did you wait that whole time to ask? I got a couple of them. Uh, I can't remember if this one's updated or not. Yeah, you're good. Probably get some changes. Okay. You're not being rude if you have. You you're seeing if you lost yours. <laughs> See, that kid's excited. He figured it out. Do you guys want me to show you how to find it now? Have you had a chance to kind of look? Did anybody figure it out? Okay. How'd you figure it out, Luke? Um, I found, so I used the velocity equation. Okay. Oh, nope. Oh. No. 
It was a good idea. I mean, like, it's not a bad idea. Andrew? I want to calculate. There you go. Okay. Oh, no, that's what I did. Oh, okay. The trace, the trace button will get you an answer that's close, and so you'll kind of know if you did it right. But the, the trace button generally will not get you the correct answer. So above trace in calculations, one of them is for finding zeros. So I would hit number two. And then down on the bottom, it kind of gives you directions. It says left bound. So I want to move the cursor to the left. Actually, there's two different spots, isn't there? Not that that's annoying, but uh, slightly annoying. So I would hit enter to the left of the zero. I'm going to hit enter to the right of the zero because it asks for right bound. And then I put the cursor close to where it crosses. So my first zero is at 0 0.391. And then if I want to find the other zero, I have to repeat that entire process. I mean, like, it seems kind of tedious that you have to repeat the process, but it still saves you a lot of time from trying to do anything by hand. Uh, if you have the, does anybody in here have the Inspire? Really? All right, never mind. The Inspire finds it for you automatically. Um, so if you guys are looking to upgrade your calculators at any point, like if your calculator breaks or something, um, you could certainly buy the calculus version of the Inspire because it's the same price as an 84. And uh, it's not allowed on ACTs. So if you don't need to take the ACT anymore, it doesn't really matter, but it is allowed on the AP test. And then most of your college classes will, mo will most likely be using it. Um, so it's, it's kind of an advantage to have it and start learning it now before you get to college. But it's obviously not something you need to like go get. Um, just kind of naturally when yours breaks down or generally they don't break on their own. They usually break when you drop them or fr <clears throat> I had one that froze in my backpack when I was walking to school. So the entire LCD screen shattered. Uh, that was fun. People complaining about 20 below tomorrow. 20 below doesn't f freeze your calculator. Uh, okay, should we move on to another question? Okay, then let's let's get to number five. And why don't you guys see if you can do the entire thing on your own from the calculator? Particle moves on the x-axis so that at any time t greater than zero. So that right away tells me I would change my window to be zero to something. Its velocity is given in meters per second by the function that what is the acceleration of the particle at t equals 4? The wording of this question is bad, though. Um, I know what the intent of the question is, but it does, it's not asking that. It says, what does this tell you about the direction of the particle? But that would only be from velocity. I know it's trying to ask you about details of the particle, like is it speeding up or slowing down, like which direction is it going, everything like that. Oh, another one. If you're in physics, make sure you change your calculator to radians. Because now that we're doing a sine function, it's going to calculate everything in degrees, because in physics you use everything in degrees. And your graph is going to look like a flat straight line because it's stretched out by 360 times. I was going to say that was very strange. Yeah. Uh, or I guess it's not 360 times, it's stretched out by 360 divided by 2 pi. So 60 times wider. So everything looks like a flat line. Wait, it should be radians. Radians. Everything in calc is in radians. And it, it is kind of annoying to switch back and forth. Uh, if you're currently in physics, I've had a lot of people 
kind of tape like a little post-it note above at the top of their calculator screen as kind of a reminder to themselves, physics, yeah. degrees, calc radians, all that test, they don't forget. And I don't, oh, at t equals 4, perfect. So 0 to 6 will still work. How are we doing? Does, does anybody need help trying to figure out where one of those two numbers came from? I don't, Kate, didn't, I don't know what that was. Was that a yes or a? I don't know why we need, why we need the velocity. Ah, okay. So <clears throat> when it tells you what is the direction, what does it tell you about the direction of the particle? The velocity is going to tell you which direction it's actually moving, right or left. The acceleration would tell you if which way it's kind of being pushed, I guess. So the velocity being positive means your particle's moving to the right. Acceleration being negative means it's getting a push in the left direction. So your particle, as it's moving, is going to be slowing down because it's being pushed the opposite way. So it's going to the right. Going to the right, slowing down. And I, I know that was the intent of this question. It was just, it's definitely worded not quite right. So it's, it's intending for you to say the particle is moving to the right and slowing down. I'm not even, I'm not even sure a good way to word that either. Um, what do you know about this particle at time four, I guess, maybe? Um, why don't we try to do seven, and then we'll call that good, because it might take a little bit to do seven. Two different types of questions. So on, on number seven, it says find when the acceleration is zero. So that's telling me you're actually going to have to graph the derivative. You're killing me. I now just realized that I did eat breakfast. It's a really long time to lunch. <laughs> Are you asking how to do cube root? Yeah. Yeah, math. Uh, math has cube root or whatever root. Oh, 
Oh, you weren't here for this part. So to graph a derivative, you, you go into the next equation, and then you act like you're going to find the derivative at a number. Oops. And you can retype in the equation if you want, or you can put in y1, which is variables, y variables, function, y1. It's not like an easy way to get to it, but that's where it is. So otherwise, you could just retype the equation. And then we put x equals x. And then it'll graph your derivative. Oh, 0 to 15. And I see the numbers are all squished, so I'm going to change my height. this screen it's down below n derive so then that's how you find derivatives and then that's where you be able to plug in the stuff so x x the equation from y1 or you type y1 okay Okay, I didn't really answer any of the questions, but I did at least put the numbers up there so you could check if you're getting those. And then that way I can kind of help you figure out where you're going wrong if you're not. And if nothing, if, if it, you know, I'm recording this so that you guys could look back at how to do it on the calculator if you need to. Yes, it, it's definitely important that you end up learning how to use the different parts of the calculator. By the time you get to the AP test, they, they expect you to be really efficient at it, and they don't like give you extra time for using the calculator for the most part. You know, whether that's good or bad, that's, that's kind of how they do it. Anybody individually kind of need help finding parts of it? You can you can say yes. You don't have to like. That's the whole point. Why we're doing this is to, to get it down. Where where are you at? The window. So on the window, I made it zero to fifteen because in the 
or X's. I did the X's from zero to 15 because in the problem it said time was from zero to 15. And then when I graphed it, everything was really smushed right by the X axis. So I could tell that my window was kind of zoomed too far out. So then I went back to the window. Uh, yours is zoomed too far in. So go to the window and under the Y variables, I put mine to be negative three to three. Because right now I'm guessing yours is smaller than that. I definitely can't read that, no. Oh, that step one doesn't matter actually. Is that the one you're looking at? Your cursor was on the big long decimal. Uh, is anybody else want some help trying to get to certain parts? Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, it just keeps me an error code. Oh, what's the error code? Uh, we were trying to find, uh, like, at the time of six, it just says it's invalid. Invalid din? It just says invalid. Oh, yeah, invalid. All right, right here. Uh, I'm guessing the window's in from, like you might have the numbers in backwards. I don't know. It looked, it looked like the error code that it gives you usually kind of tells you what yeah. you did wrong. No, that's fine. Oh, I grabbed it. Yeah. I'll try to find the trace of acceleration and velocity. Okay. Zero to fifteen is what the directions kind of want to set. Not that that should. Because you were zoomed farther out, yeah. um, 
maybe for some reason sense. it didn't calculate enough spot. Yeah. I don't know, that's strange. Yeah. Yeah, you, you had it set up right, though. It, does anybody else want help with anything? Okay, then let's actually answer these questions and so then I can stop the recording. Um, Jack, you're basically the only person that answered today. I'll let you call on the next person. <clears throat> yeah, do you mean Van Linen? Oh, I Okay. I mean, you were looking at him, so I assume yeah. so, but yep. Okay. Um, what does acceleration equals zero mean again? Perfect. So velocity is constant. It's not speeding up or slowing down. Okay. At time six, what is the velocity acceleration of the particle? That's what we found below. Is the particle speeding up or slowing down? Luke, who's the last person today? Let's go more than a desk away. Okay, thank, perfect. I didn't call on you. You look like you're ready to blame me. What'd you answer for the last one? Speeding up or slowing down? Slowing down because? Perfect. Good. Okay. Um, I would recommend when you guys are doing the homework, I'd recommend you do the calculator once first so that you kind of just get it ingrained in your mind. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with my kids' appointments tomorrow, so you guys have tomorrow to work on this. So if you want to bring it home tonight, sure, go ahead, but otherwise you don't need to. Um, I, I would recommend you just see what you can get done during class tomorrow. And then if you have any leftover after that, do it over the weekend. 